everyone. Um, I'm Mayor Emma Mulvaney Stanek. I'm really thrilled we had such a good uh, turnout to start off this really exciting pro uh, process and opportunity to talk about this block that we are in part standing in right now, Memorial Block. Uh, I want to start by saying a few just general remarks about what this opportunity presents, and then I'll pass it over. I'll do a couple introductions of key people in the room, but then I'm going to uh, pass it over to um, an expression of this public-private partnership that we are embarking on to explain how we'll spend our time together here tonight. Um, so first of all, Memorial Block, we all have such a legacy story or a personal attachment story. Many of us who especially have the longevity here in Vermont have some sort of story. And you've probably even heard me talk about how I would not exist today if it were not for Memorial Block. It was the first date of my parents. And I'm pretty sure the math lines up that I was born <laughs> very close to uh, uh, nine months after that. So we all have a lot of um, attachment to the auditorium itself, but so much else what happens in this larger block between the fire station, this beautiful library, the church, other things that have happened in and around this block. And I also know that as especially a new mayor, we have so many needs within this city, but a lot of what, what once was, what is still here, inspires a lot of, of um, identifying what else we need to do here in Burlington, which may or may not exist in the future of this block. But this does not mean that it is not an important thing to tell us because we have a whole city that can be a place where we address that need, to address that, um, that critical thing to be brought back online, to modernize, to rethink, to reemerge, whatever that might be. So a perfect example is 242, which a lot of folks um, closer to my age probably went through and experienced in some way, shape, or form. The spirit of that, the need for youth programming, the need for connectivity of youth of all shapes and sizes, that doesn't necessarily have to live on this physical square block, but it is clearly a need we have in the community. And I hope that is a good example of say that. The department heads know I say the phrase say the thing often. That's the thing to say, to tell us we have a great need here in Burlington for youth programming. It doesn't have to live on this block, but we need to know that. We need to be affirmed by the community to say that is a priority that we need. And then there's probably a million and a half other examples like that to tell us about here um, in this process. This process is also an opportunity um, to kick off a different way of thinking about engaging you all. One of the uh, most boring and tiresome things can be going to a public hearing, having two minutes to pour your heart out, to share all your opinions and your positions and your worries and your hopes, and to have that feel really um, uh, constricted in ways that are not great for public process. So I've asked across a few different departments here, and we have people from the planning department, CEDO, BED, police, fire, DPW, uh, the assessor's office, I mean half the departments have been engaged in one way or shape or another to really think about how do we do this engagement process in a, an exciting way, one that gets you into a creative mindset, one that honors the legacy of this block and listens to your stories at the same time. So this is going to feel different, certainly than a city council hearing, this will feel different than a formal forum. Um, and that's by design to try this on. And I'm considering this, no pun intended, a book end. This is the first beginning of what will be probably a two month or so process, perhaps longer, to give us enough time in different formats and different modes to engage our entire community for <coughs> what comes next and what we need to know um, from all of you. So this is not the end all. This is the first part of the book thing. Mary, whatever that is, I don't know, book stand thing, book thing. Um, and then there will be a lot of ways to engage online, passively here at the library, and then we'll figure out what the other bookend is as we see how engagement goes. So lots of opportunities and lots of additional ideas uh, for you to give us. So as I mentioned in the front end, there's a lot of great opportunity here and that includes a very um, healthy and strategic partnership with our private partners as part of this um, undertaking on the block. As you all know, because I talked about it for basically three months straight, we have some financial challenges in the city and we don't have a ton of extra resources sitting by. And so uh, both due to that and also due to the nature of the complexities and the challenges of pulling off um, what we need here on this block as well as how we need housing and how we need to think about public safety and all the things, a good smart partnership really makes sense here. So today we're joined by two developers who have a deep love of Burlington, for which I have seen and heard in my meetings with them so far. One is Joe Larkin, who's right here, and, we're, oh, and Eric's right next to you. That's so convenient. You're standing right next to each other. Um, both have a uh, connection to this, this city and have done other developments in and around Burlington. 
And uh, while others have dissuaded them from engaging on such a good opportunity, I want to be positive opportunity, like this complexity of Memorial Block, they have not been dissuaded. And um, I think we've, we've met several times, and there's value alignment around what they can offer, what the city needs, and the larger needs of making sure that the well-being of Burlington is part of this larger conversation. It's bigger than this block. And so I'm excited they're both here today, um, and we're going to embark on this together to really make sure this is a good, strong partnership going forward. If you're a department head that I rattled off before, do you want to just raise your hand so I can, you can just show kind of the leadership? Chapin from DPW, Chief Lachance from Fire, DC, DC uh, 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 Chief uh, Curtin, who's back there from Fire as well, uh, Chief Murad from the Police Department. Uh, we have, I know, Itameto from BED, uh, Electric Department, who was checking you in. Um, we keep scanning over here. Our assessor is somewhere. Joe Turner is hiding back there. Joe Turner. We have Sarah from the planning department. And yeah, I keep talking about Mary. Mary, where are you hiding? Amongst the books. Yes. Mary, our director of the library. And then I see lots of other folks who have done either are currently in leadership or otherwise for the city, between city councilors, former city councilors, library, friends of the library. I mean, there's all a host of people here. So thank you for being here. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Sarah and Samantha, which is an example, again, of our private-public partnership here, to explain a little bit of how we'll, we'll corral your input here tonight. Great. Did I cover everything? Yes. Thank okay, you great. so much, Mayor. What a special welcome to have a mayor at your first public engagement meeting. So Can you walk over there, please? Thank you. Sure. Um, I think I'm just here to say welcome. This is a very um, relaxed app. Once the mayor has finished talking and I've um, finished talking, this is really an open house for people to move through the information and um, ask questions when you have questions and most importantly for us to share the information and share the ideas that you have. Um, there's an opportunity that maybe you heard about when you checked in to share your memory, your favorite memory, your story of Memorial Auditorium. We want to collect those and we want to understand why, why this place has been meaningful so that we can make sure to capture that and, and create that kind of space um, to continue on in the city. So there's a series of stations. I might let um, Sarah and Zach talk a little bit about, I don't know what all of them are, um, that you should move through. Again, some of them are for asking questions, but the other ones are for you to provide input. If you want to provide input with a dot, that's available. If you want to write a note, that's available. And if you just want to talk, there will be someone at every station that you can just talk to and we'll write down what your idea is. The station behind um, the television cameras is very important. That's where the snacks and the refreshments are. Um, and there's a station that's also um, hidden back here that is a little bit adjacent to what we're doing tonight, but really excited about um, the potential partnership with a new group that's working on the Burlington History and Culture um, Museum. And they're here to gather stories about a memorial potentially, but any other stories in the city and to share their ideas. Um, because we think there's good opportunity for collaboration in this new project. And I'm going to pass it to yeah, Sarah and Zach um, from CETA, which I don't, I'm not sure you mentioned, Mayor, um, to talk about what the different stations are. Sure. Sorry. And this is Zach from CETA. And Brian Pine can join us tonight, but he's the director of CETA, of course. So Zach and Sarah. Great. Um, just a quick overview of and the uh, of the circulation of this meeting. So we have information about what exactly the pre-development agreement is what it involves and also kind of how a little bit about like how we got where we are now since it was since the memorial was built in 1927 so going over the, the past what century of of memorial also trying to understand what on in memorial block uh, we're looking to have in our community spaces as well as mobility and transportation access so the really we will have uh, people at every station to answer questions and Again, really want to emphasize the interest in feedback and getting um, as much input as we can. Okay, one more, one more add-on that if um, this information will all be available on the CETO. CETO has a designated website um, for the memorial block, so all the information, if it's too much to take in while you're standing in a room full of people, will be available, as well as the opportunity to continue to add your ideas um, and to make sure you invite your friends and neighbors to, to log into that website and add their ideas for folks who couldn't be here today. Yes, as part of the, uh, this robust public engagement process, um, we are going to be having a uh, follow-up online survey as well that includes these same types of questions as well as others that are informed by your input tonight. 
and your little takeaway card that you got when you checked in or when you take it on your way out, that's got the QR code and the website, the web address to our project webpage for additional resources that were just mentioned. Enjoy! Great. All right. Thank you. My name is Georgie Rubens. I'm the director of the Burlington Farmers Market um, and I'm really excited to be here and learning more about the Memorial Auditorium Development Project. Um, the Farmers Market, we have been looking for a permanent home for a very long time. You might not know that we're currently on a year-to-year -year lease at our current location at Pine Street. Um, so it's really exciting to hear that this new space could potentially be a home for us in future. We would love to have that stability to be able to invest in the market and bring more infrastructure to our customers. Hi, my name is Megan Epler Wood and I'm here from Ward 6. Um, and I've been looking over all of the uh, boards and talking to all the reps. And what I feel we need to do is see a feasibility study and a historic preservation review. And at that point, before any decisions are made, I would love to have some serious community engagement together with our city councilors. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Gail Rosenberg. I'm here at Fletcher Free Library to be able to tell people about a new project. It's the Burlington History and Culture Center. And there are a group of us who are trying to create a center that is community-based, so we're looking for input. What should be the stories we tell in this center? What ways should we present them? What eras should we talk about? Who are the people who really made a difference here? Who are the everyday people in Burlington? So that who are the people who put the roofs on the buildings and built the bricks and cut people's hair and had the grocery stores? and what impact did they have on the community. And we're also going to be looking at migrant uh, migration and we'll be talking about that. But right now we're looking for input from all of you. Hi, um, this is Sharon Busher, and I'm here at the Fletcher Free Library at the Memorial Block presentation. Um, the format was different than what I had anticipated. I had anticipated having an opportunity to hear what people thought and having people um, in developers and others respond to the questions so everyone could hear those responses. This format was a ver was a, a set of stages of information available to the public. Um, so I'm hoping that in the future a format like the one I was anticipating will occur where people can come hear a presentation and then ask questions and have those responses uh, heard by everyone in attendance and anyone who watches that video. The one real piece that is value for tonight is that you did have a chance to interact with the developers and you also had an opportunity to look at Memorial Auditorium as a structure and vote on what you think you would like to see there. And there were lots of options that were stated, and you could also put a post-it of something that isn't stated. But ideas like a cultural center, um, a farmer's market, um, a maker space, there were multiple choices, and you got to put dots. I hate the dot system, but you got to put dots as to what you liked uh, and what, what you valued most. And then you also got a star that would prioritize what was most important to you to preserve or happen in that building. Um, I'm a proponent of saving the entire building. I'm a realist to know that whatever is put inside that building um, that, the, that is community service won't 
pay for renovating the structure. So we need some money-making component. And so I'm looking for the John, um, not John, um, Mr. Larkin, I can't remember John Larkin's son's name anyways, and Eric Farrell to come forward with those kinds of ideas so that we can preserve that building Remember the people, the World War I veterans who actually wanted that structure built. Remember our history and give back to a building that's given so much to our community. It's given us entertainment, it's given us a winter's farmer's market, it's given us a place to hold um, uh, venues for all sorts of events. And it also is a forum for uh, nominating mayors. Our, our prior mayor, Moreau Weinberger, actually got the Democratic nod in Memorial Auditorium. So it has served so much and given so much to our community. And our, what did we give back? Deferred maintenance. So we owe that building um, a whole lot. And I hope that we can make it right so I hope all of you who didn't get a chance to come will be motivated to get involved, to hear, have your voices heard, and to take part in a process that really is important to our community. The whole block is important, but the structure, Memorial Auditorium, is key um, to this block. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll turn it back to Charlie. Hey, hello. Uh, my name is Terry Litchfield. Um, I'm here at the Fletcher Free Library today for uh, uh, impromptu meetings about uh, about what they're going to do with the Memorial Auditorium and this whole block air air here. It's been very informative. Um, I'm an old school Burlington person. I've lived in uh, lived here since I was in 1951. I was born at the Gozerian Hospital. I'm here. Um, I have really fond memories of. Uh, the Memorial Auditorium. I, I was just talking to somebody, they mentioned the Harlem Globe Charters, and I said, Well, I remember going with my father and seeing the Harlem Globe Charter when I was four years old. That was a long time ago, that was longer ago than I'd like to admit. But, you know, there's been professional wrestling, basketball, thing out. The Golden Gloves and back in the day was a really big thing in Vermont. Um, you know, tradition, I would like to see some. Part of the building be used for some sort of historical thing about the building and maybe like a sports museum for um, the state of Vermont. There's been a lot of people that come and gone through here that, you know, were pretty good athletes at one time or another and uh, a lot of them went through through the uh, auditorium. Different basketball championships, different other things. Um, so, Whatever they do, I would hope they do something for the people. You know, something that the people can utilize uh, from themselves. It'd be nice if you could bring, you know, some more people in the, in the town for events, uh, concerts, and things like that. But it'd be nice if they would take into consideration the Burlington people as the number one priority. Of the thing. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. So, uh, my name's Eric Farrell, and I was born and raised in Burlington, and I'm here to chit-chat a little bit about the Memorial Block and my involvement. Um, uh, we put together a public-private partnership with uh, the city, uh, Joe Larkin and I in the city, and uh, people have asked me, the, the, the question they've asked me the most is, why am I doing this? Why do I want to be involved in Memorial? And, I, and the answer for me is pretty simple, it's because I was born and raised here. I used to live uh, 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 half a block up College Street. And I'm, I'm a real estate developer by trade. And Joe Larkin's a real estate developer by trade. So this is the kind of work that we do. Um, but I, I love the city. I like downtown. I think that uh, if this block is done correctly, it will, it will help to uh, revitalize the downtown and support the marketplace uh, with a mixture of housing and commercial uses. But but, uh, but also a block that's, uh, that's just enjoyable for pedestrians to walk through, whether you're going from, through from east to west, from South Union to, to um, uh, Winooski Avenue, or, you, or you're crossing over from Maine to College Street. Um, we think the block wants to have a heart of its own, and uh, 
I would say stay tuned. It's going to take a few months for the picture to clear. We're not here tonight to present a particular proposal. We just we have a very loose vision about what we'd like to see there, combination of private and public spaces, but uh, but all the way a, a public-private partnership with the city. So stay tuned and wish us luck.